Welcome back, builders, developers, and future developers on the Now platform. This is episode eight of our Learn JavaScript on the ServiceNow platform. My name is Chuck Tomasi. You can find me at servicenow.com. You can also find a whole bunch of other stuff, including the GitHub repo over here at the GitHub repo that you see on the bottom. All the scripts used today and in all of this series are available there. You can find them broken down by lesson. Let's get on with our lesson today about ensuring your data type. Now, your variables may not be what you think they are, and this can get a little confusing because JavaScript is what we call a loosely typed language. It does not force you to put an integer into an integer variable. You can do some really weird stuff and it can get confusing. And as a result, I often find it necessary to use the tools that we've got today to force it to understand what is the data type that I've got. And you may see these as you go through various parts of ServiceNow. Let me go over to my text editor, uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code, and show you. Here is a simple variable declaration where I initialize a variable called i equals five. And then I create one called istr, and I use this thing on the numeric variable called toString. This converts my integer to a string. Why would I want to do that? Because I may have something that is not a number, not a string, and I want it to be a string. I want to get the string piece of it out. It may print correctly, but I want to do something else to it and treat it as a string going forward. And then another helpful hint is this type of operator. I can tell what the type of a variable is. So let me take this little three piece thing out of script one, lesson eight, or I said that backwards, lesson one, script eight, and run this. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit more helpful information in here. Say type of i equals, and then it will say type of i. I just stick that prefix out in front of it. Sometimes when I'm writing code, weird things happen and I go, is this really what I think is happening? And I went, whoa. It is not even close. I thought I had a, an integer and it's not an integer. It's an object. Whoa. So that's, that's what can happen. Now, if I run this, it says, yes, I is a number and I str is a string because I used to string to generate the value for that variable I str. Again, why would I want to do that? Because I may want just the string piece of that. Now, if I look at the rest of this, and say, I can turn it back into a number by using parse int. And there are some variations of how you want to use parse int, but this is a very simple one to say, go turn this string into a number. And I can use type of again to say, now what is n? Let's put that on the end of my script here. And say, turn, it, turn i string back into a number and print out what the value is. Because if i, Yay, hooray, it came back as a five, because that's where we all started. So Chuck, you kind of ran around in a circle, but why would you want to do that? Well, again, if I wanted to say, what is GS info n plus i, I would get 10. I would hope, because five plus five is 10. Let's put a little label on here so we know where we are. n plus i equals whatever n plus i is. <sighs> Try that again. N plus I equals, yeah. Now, here's where parentheses can also help. I want to, and you want to make sure your parentheses are always matched. Otherwise, you get syntax errors. I want to concatenate on the value N plus I, but it could be going plus N plus I, not really what I wanted. If I were to say N plus I STR, then I get 55. It's taking the five number and the five string and saying, these don't match. I can't add a string to a number and get a number. So I'm going to add a number to a string and you're going to get a string. I'm sorry. Five plus five is 55. If you were to ask a two-year-old, okay, they don't know values and this is what you get. You get two-year-old math when you're adding strings together. So if you start seeing things like that, Try looking at using parse int to convert it into a number. You can also use parse float if you wanted to put it a, turn it into a floating point number. Let's try that and say var f equals parse float i s t r, and then we'll output gs .info f equals plus f. See what that gets for our f value. Well, what do you know? It turns up five. 
it's not 5.0 until I do some other operation to it. It's still an integer variable. It got a solid five out of there. Sometimes I thought I would have seen a 5.0, kind of depends. The other, uh, so we covered two string to convert something to a string, which is helpful if you don't know exactly what it is. We've got type of to tell me exactly what type this is, parse int to convert a string to an integer, parse float to convert a string to a floating point number. So, and then of course, how you operate on those variables is dependent on what type of variable it is. That's lesson eight for you. And I look forward, here's, here's an exercise for you before I forget. Uh, lab exercise, here's your homework. Create three string variables. I don't care what you call them, A, B, C, name one, name two, name three, whatever. Three string variables. Print the length of each string. So you know this one's five, that one's 12, that one's 16, whatever the length happens to be. Now, concatenate them together, but instead of using a space, use a new line character and save that to a new variable. Then print the length of that new variable. So if I've got variables A, B, and C, and I concatenate them together and put in new lines in there, how many characters is the whole thing? That I want you to tell me in the comments on the uh, description of this video. So put your comments on the YouTube video and uh, don't spoil it for anyone, but don't look if, you've all, if you haven't done this yet, but see if your answers match the rest. And if it's different, see if we can find out why it's different. So that's your exercise for exercise, what is it, six, seven, and eight. We'll go with that. So I will talk to you again real soon when, oh, I mentioned this earlier that I was gonna talk about commenting. I think I mentioned this in the very first video. We're gonna talk about commenting your code in the next one. So join me there, won't you? Till then, take care, bye.